Hi guys, today we are going to review a Loom Cube broadcast lighting kit. This broadcast lighting kit right here. I'm going to go through some of the features and some of the reasons why I've got it. It does tie into some previous videos I've done about lighting as well. I'm not going to go over the full unboxing like everyone else does because you can find lots of videos on YouTube for this particular light. But I'm going to go through some of the features that I got it for and what I think it's going to be useful for and what I'm going to use it for. This kit is a fairly new addition, newish. It came out in 2021, it says so on the bottom of the box. Um, and it's an addition to their video conferencing set. So they do two lights in this range. They do the video conferencing light and they do the video or broadcast lighting kit, which is this one. Now the actual light that's included in this kit, I've been mentioning for a while since I did some previous reviews on light. It's one of them things that I wanted for a while, but didn't get around to getting. But this is a better deal by getting the broadcast lighting kit because you get in the broadcast lighting kit, you've got your packaging, you get a USB-C charging lead, you get an extension lead, so it converts from USB-A to C, so you can make a long lead if you wanted to run an extension cord. In the kit, it basically comes like this. So you've got a sucky mount, a little tripod, a stick, and the actual light itself. So I'm going to take off the light first. I'll leave the light to one side and we're going to talk about the accessories just for now because of the fact that this is the kit rather than just the light on its own. The kit includes a mini leg thing with a little quarter 20 thread on it and an extension pole with a ball head and a quarter 20 thread on the top. Now the ball head on the extension pole doesn't come off. So this is actually fixed to the extension pole. You can't get it off. It loosens up and moves around and the ball head does exactly what it's supposed to do, but it doesn't actually come off of here. But that's not an issue. Don't worry about that. I have got plenty of those. This has got a quarter 20 thread on the bottom. That fixes it to the legs. Then you've got your stand for your light but it could also be a stand for a camera which is why it's so useful and why it's such a good idea to get this kit because this stuff alone could be worth the money you've got this this does extend this extends up to 30 inches so you've actually got a huge great big extendable stand which is really really useful stand it on your desk next to you stick your light on top of it the other thing is it's portable and really lightweight so this folded down takes up no space in the bag especially if you take it apart that in a camera bag takes up no room at all and you can put it virtually anywhere so it's given you a couple of options it's very sturdy when it's open so it could be either for the camera instead of using a big tripod like i am now or as you said your light and that's why we'll get to the panel light in a little while the other thing you get with it is a sucker connector this lets you suck onto something so in which case they, the way they've designed it is to stick on the back of your monitor or your laptop it has actually got a gopro pronged fitting so like a gopro mount to it which is again is really really useful as before it's not one of them things i actually desperately need because i've got things like it and i say uh, these things i've got i've got a couple of these i've got a nip on one and i've also got the one that came in my gopro accessories which is connected at the moment to my offensive Ulanzi light, the light that I have reviewed previously. I'll stick a review to that up here. I'll also stick a review to when it went wrong up here as well a little bit later, because this is the light that I bought instead of one of these. I bought this to light me up when I'm out and about as a video conference light or selfie light. And it went wrong after about a year, hardly ever used it and it started flickering and mucking about and it's just, it's yeah it doesn't do what it's supposed to do um but we'll get to that one again in a minute the big thing about the broadcast kit the best bit about the broadcast kit of course is the broadcast light so this is a bi-color panel go these were available separately before they did the kit you could just buy this on its own it's a bi-color light which basically means it's just white but you've got warm white and cool white or coolish white um, it's a really, really good video conferencing kit. That's what it's designed for. And that's what I've bought it for. Now, the reason I didn't buy them previously is I thought it was quite expensive. I remember when I bought this thing that doesn't really work very well, that was about $20. 
This was around $120 at the time. And the thing is, I had my loom cubes. So you may have noticed throughout my video, some of my vlogs, I have mentioned loom cubes before. As I said in that review for the Ulanzi, I was comparing it to the loom cubes, which are these things. Um, and I've become maybe a little bit of a fanboy, but not a massive fanboy. So yeah, when I'm outside, I have previously used the loom cube as an outside light to light me, but they were very, very bright. Aziz light! And their color temperature is not that brilliant. These are very, very white. Very, very noisy. And this light's very, very bright. This is a 6,000 Kelvin light, which is very white and too white in many cases. And the camera gave me a bluey effect. So later, try and rectify that. I did buy the diffuser kit for it, which goes over that. But diffusers spread the light about all over the place. I mean, it's still very white, to be honest with you, but the spread of light isn't as good as a panel light. And I'll put a link here to a guy called Marcus Pix. I'll stick a link in the descriptions down there. Marcus Pix explains very clearly about dome lights and flat lights and the differences and what you can get and the effects you get because they give different shadows and lighting effects on your subject, i.e. me. When I'm indoors, I'm using the ring light. The ring light is the Equitech ring lights, which I've had for a while. And I use that on a very big light stand, one of my dad's old light stands. Um, at the medium setting, it's got three temperature settings. So it's got cool, warm and sort of middle, which is daylight, which is the setting it's on now. But again, it's quite big. I've got a little soxing over it, like a gauze to try and diffuse it a bit. But again, it's sort of very open light because it's slightly curved. The light goes everywhere. The idea of a panel is a panel gives you direct light exactly what you're pointing at and it doesn't spill anywhere. This light, there's a little button on the side to switch it on. Just press the little blue button, wait, bam, and it's on. So this light has 112 LEDs across here to light it. But as I said, it's a panel. And as it's a panel, it's very direct. It's very straight and at you. And it doesn't light all that stuff and rubbish behind you as much as the ring lights or the loom cubes do. On the back of the light, we've got a little LCD panel. This tells us that the light's got battery life, how much hours are left on the battery. It gives us the light rating because it's a bi-color light, so what setting you're on, and also the percentage. And very similar to um, some of my other lights and things that I've had previously, you press a button and toggle between the two. So this actually works very similar on the Ulanzi. You press a button and it toggles between either the color temperature with a little wheel you've got on the side, you can change the temperature of the light. So you can go right to a very warm light. So that's with all the LEDs lit. That's warm. And then you just, with the wheel, turn the wheel up to change the color up to five, 600, which is still less than the Loom Cube, which is a set is 6,000. Hold it in to switch it off. There is also a nice silicon diffuser that goes over this light. So you stick the silicon diffuser on. The silicon diffuser has got holes so you can get to the controls and the USB charging port. And you've also got two quarter 20 threads. So you one on the bottom, one on the side. So you can either mount it like that on top of your camera or like that. And I'll show you the examples there. That that's what I was going to do with the Ulanzi. The Ulanzi was either going to be on top of the GoPro or top of the Sony to light me. And it would have been fine. I would have kept it if it didn't fail. I couldn't really use loom cubes because they said they're too bright. So the idea is when I'm out, I'll be able to use this as an outdoor light on top of the camera with or without the diffuser. I'm not sure. The diffuser actually stops the light down by about three or four stops. So it does dampen it quite a lot and it does change the color temperature slightly. With the diffuser on, the light is slightly warmer. I said the maximum this light goes to is daylight and then it goes really warm, really orangey. But the light may not need it. I might just use it as it is as a panel without the diffuser on it. The other thing that's good about this compared to things like the Ulanzi is it's, it is actually very small. It's tiny, little thin, like a credit card thing. You can just pop that into any bag. And with this kit, you could easily cart that about. I mean, that's tiny and that could walk about with you. Or as I said, with a ball mount and a flash mount, you could stick that on top of your camera, which is what they sold it for, which is what they've done with it. So it's an all metal made unit 
it's strong and it's sturdy. In their own videos, Loom Cube have dropped it from great heights and even thrown it against the wall. I wouldn't be doing that with it, but from my experience with the previous Loom Cubes, these things, which are waterproof and built like tanks, this stuff is very, very well built and lasts really, really well. So I'm not too fussed about it in carting it about and knocking it occasionally. It is built a bit like a tank, but it's so small you can just shove it in a pocket anywhere. So LoomCube used to sell this panel Go by colour light as it was on its own. Which they don't actually sell it as a by colour light anymore. They have replaced it with an RGB Go, which I have thought about in the past. The reason I thought about that is because the Ulanzi has a full colour spectrum. The LoomCube panel Go RGB has a full spectrum, but there is a downside to those. Um, they do a bigger version. They do a panel pro rgb i think they did do a panel pro normal by color as well and they do a smaller version they do a mini as well that's only got 69 leds so the output on a panel mini is not that great it's only 550 lux now i say it's not great but this the panel go by color light this is 1050 so 1050 lux so it's virtually double the output of the panel mini the panel pro is been now an rgb light now because it's an rgb light it has to compete with other lights in the unit so it's not all white and that's the problem with rgb lights i found that with rgb lights with my ring light my ring light which is three color which is white the one i'm using now is brighter than the one that's over there which i'm using to light that green background that one on its white setting is a quite a few stops less than this one and the reason for that is because they've had to mix in color lights with the white lights so the same goes for loom cube the loom cube panel go rgb which is replaced this has less output for whiteness it's only got a 660 lux output so again it's a lot less than this one it is about 400 lux lower powered than this one the panel pro rgb again still an rgb light so that's got 835 lux so again it's still lower than this because they're mixing colors in rgb colors so this thing the loom cube the loom cubes are spotlights they're not really designed for video conferencing these are like designed for lighting up subjects putting underwater doing all sorts of amazing and magical things with these have got an output of 1500 lux this is designed more for filming a person than filming yourself so because it's going to be within close range the rating is within about a meter or so of being 1050 lux now that doesn't mean that i'm probably won't use it for other things i may well use this as a product light to light products to take pictures of when i'm doing stills photography because again it's still going to be very useful for that but my main purpose to use this as a key light to light me i could have this thing at the side of me lighting me up the rechargeable battery lasts forever on this thing it literally i mean i won't need it at full power if i was to use this at say 35 percent i'm going to get about 2.4 hours of use so i'll turn off the ring light this is going to provide a different type of light as you can see this is and again it's not lighting up the background as much because it is more direct the thing is with this light, I could, if I wanted to, still stick it on my dad's old metal tripod and stick it up much higher than I need to. Although the light height on this tripod is really good, especially if I've got it resting on the desk. It's just, if I'm not on a desk somewhere, you need to put it on a light stand. And for outside use for when I'm using the camera in the dark at night, which I will test and I'm going to show you the tests of that. So I've come out, it's dusk stroke. It's also quite a grey sky so this is without the light obviously with the light on a very low setting as well i shall switch it on and this is with the light on and it's on quite a low setting as i said this is on about 20 percent with the diffuser um yeah it's not too bad actually it's not too bright for me to look at it it's not going to like blind me but it's enough to light up my face and do what i'm supposed to be doing with it Okay, so this is more likely to be the case scenario where I will be using it, and where it's sort of it's dark, but there's lights around. So as I move around, normally the camera tries to expose for some of the stuff behind me, and then there's not enough light on my face. So that's what this light's on. It's only on very low again. 
this is with the diffuser off um, at about 15 percent so if you can get it at the right price i would definitely get one because it's a brilliant light and i said it's for its use for video conferencing if you are going to use it for webcam web chat zoom meeting stuff like that then yeah it's brilliant definitely definitely worth having <laughs> <laughs>